All right, guys, so I talked a little bit about uh, beginner rackets um, and what you should look for. Uh, next, I'm going to head to where uh, I am going to buy my next racket. Uh, so once you kind of get familiar and you burn through one or two rackets uh, pretty cheaply, you might want to start considering uh, buying a little bit more expensive one. Um, so a usual price range for a tennis racket is uh, between $150 and I think I've seen one as high as $260, but that's for like a, uh, like a really nice uh, Babolat racket that a lot of uh, players on the Pro Tour use. Um, so for beginner type rackets, I kind of recommend Prince, uh, or at least they, I used to recommend Prince. Uh, so they have gotten, as far as I can tell, a little bit less uh, prominent. Um, they have, uh, they put out fewer new rackets than the ones they do put out, I'm not too sure about. I'm actually just about to buy a, uh, another Prince racket. It's uh, the Prince Tour 100T. Um, and it's just a heavy, stiff uh, carbon racket um, that uh, I generate a lot of power with. Uh, so once you start looking into buying your own racket, you also kind of want to start looking into uh, your strings that you put on it. Um, so for me, uh, I hit with quite a lot of uh, power and what that kind of relates to is broken strings. Uh, so a lot of uh, rackets that come pre-made, I'm not exactly sure what they're made with, uh, whether it's a synthetic string of some kind, um, but generally that's what you find the most of are synthetic strings. Uh, and they're definitely good strings for just about doing anything. They get good spin, they get good power, uh, but they break uh, once you start hitting them pretty hard. Um, uh, and they'll break within like a month or two of hitting. So if you're a really infrequent player, definitely don't go with uh, synthetic as uh, your main string. Um, so there are, as far as I'm aware, a couple of different main types of strings. There's uh, your natural gut string, which is a, I think, I'm not positive, uh, it's actually made from animal intestine. Um, and that's supposed to be a very, very soft, a really nice feel to your racket. Um, but again, they kind of wear out and uh, break fairly frequently. A lot of pro players will use them because they hit so well. Uh, but they don't mind the high cost because they they, they make a lot of money and uh, they have people string their rackets for them. Uh, so it's not necessarily the best choice for a recreational player. Um, personally, what I use is a hybrid between uh, synthetic strings uh, and polyester strings. So the polyester is the other main type of string uh, that um, they make. Uh, you can find other different kinds of strings, but it's mainly synthetic, polyester, and natural. Um, I think I saw a statistic in like the 2015 Wimbledon, uh, about 60% of the professional players used at least some kind of polyester in their uh, racket strings, uh, and that's kind of what I do too. I use a uh, synthetic uh, string as my crosses and polyester string as my mains. Uh, so a polyester string, uh, there are a bunch of different types that do a bunch of different things. The one I use is called Babolat RPM Blast and supposedly you get a lot more spin with it. But the main reason I like it is because I don't break them very easily. Um, and they last quite a while. Uh, the only problem with polyester is they lose a lot of tension right out of the gate. Um, so you might string it at like 60 pounds and uh, after you've hit with it for like an hour or two it may have already lost uh, quite a bit of tension and you can feel it. It'll uh, start hitting the ball a little bit deeper than you want it to. Um, 
but I I just I get over that because it's uh, it's a string that lasts quite a long time. Um, so the next thing you kind of want to look at when you're uh, buying a racket is your string tension that you get it done at. Um, now this can change with the different type of strings you get, but generally it's thought of that the tighter your strings are, the more control you have over the ball and the kind of the less hard you hit. Um, and the looser they are, the more power you hit. Uh, I think it has something to do with the amount of uh, depth that your strings give uh, side to side. So when you're hitting the ball, the strings flex and then shoot the ball out when they're softer or when it's at a lower tension. Um, so if you're looking for something with quite a lot of control, definitely get it strung a little bit tighter, but stay within the recommended stringing tension that the racket recommends. Uh, you can go a little bit outside that, but there's risks f as far as uh, frame damage uh, when you start doing that. There are other uh, things you can look at when you're um, when you're uh, buying a racket and some of that those things can include like your string pattern uh, now I'm not quite good enough where I have to worry about that kind of nuance uh, but as far as I'm aware the only difference that a string pattern makes uh, is where and how big the sweet spot is on your racket that means kind of the sweet spot is that part in the center of your racket uh, where when you hit the ball there it's perfectly centered and you hit a really nice pop on the ball. Um, I, again, I don't hit this, uh, I, I, I mean, I think I hit the sweet spot. Um, I, I generally have wear lines right in the center of my racket, uh, but I don't really pay too much attention to the sweet spot, so I don't really um, look for that when I'm uh, buying a new racket. Kind of the last thing you want to focus on uh, if you're buying a racket is your grip size. Uh, a lot of different people have a lot of different opinions on uh, grip size and I'll kind of walk you through later uh, what, how, how to measure your grip size, uh, but really it all comes down to feel. Um, there are a couple things that a couple different people say like uh, the bigger your grip size, the easier ground strokes are. I used to think this, but I kind of realized later that it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Uh, and they said that smaller grips help with serves, but I, I don't understand how that uh, can really work like that. Um, so generally I, I uh, just stick to what my measurement is, which is uh, 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, generally rackets are measured in uh, eighths of an inch. I believe it's either, oh, I'm going to have to look this up, but it's either 3 or 4, and I'll put the answer here, 3 or 4 inches, and then whatever above that is your measurement size. So it, is, it could be 1 eighth of an inch, 2 eighths of an inch. Uh, Three eighths of an inch, and once you get to four, uh, they start measuring it as like half, half an inch, um, and uh, above that. Uh, so if you ever see on the bottom of your racket, and you look uh, for like a number uh, on the butt plate of your racket, it'll tell you what the grip size is on some rackets. Uh, so on mine, it has like a little three because I have a three eighths of an inch grip. Um, I think that's on the smaller grip size, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so really what you want is uh, something that's not too big that you have a trouble holding onto it when you're swinging really hard, and something that's uh, not too small that you feel like you can crush it in your hand. Um, so really go out and kind of feel around with different rackets and uh, see what you like the best. So the next thing you want to uh, consider when you're buying a racket is uh, where you buy it from. So you can buy uh, many different types of rackets from uh, like uh, Dick Sporting Goods or very large uh, sporting goods stores and they will accommodate you. I, I think some of them do string rackets. Um, but 
uh, generally the people that work there aren't necessarily the most knowledgeable uh, on uh, the different aspects of uh, tennis. Um, for me personally, I go to a uh, pretty small tennis shop that just opened up in the area, I think uh, just over five years ago. Um, it's owned by a guy who was very prominent in the tennis community uh, um, um, at the time. And uh, I have bought, gotten my, stri my stringing done there the past, I want to say, uh, since it opened, I've gotten my strings done there. So when you walk into one of these places, they really know what they're uh, talking about when you start asking them. And if they don't know, they will tell you. Uh, and you can kind of look it up on your own. Um, but I highly recommend going to some of these uh, smaller shops. And especially if they're locally owned, it uh, can really, really uh, help the shop owner and really encourage more uh, tennis play in the area. Because a lot of these people... Uh, promote tournaments they sponsor tournaments and a lot of the large retailers won't sponsor local tournaments um so when you uh keep these shops in business they really help out um with the tennis community so i'm going to walk in kind of show what um, an average smaller shop uh selection would be like um and uh yeah see you inside Alright, uh, so I just bought the racket, um, and I was actually wrong, it's the uh, Prince 100P uh, that I bought, um, Prince Tour 100P. Uh, so at a lot of these local shops, I don't think at large retailers they'll do it, uh, they uh, do have a demo program where you pay $5 a racket, um, and you get to try out a bunch of different kinds of rackets. So uh, the two that I was kind of looking at was the Wilson Pro Staff uh, racket. I believe it was inspired by uh, like a, a really popular racket that Roger Federer used. I don't know if he still uses that uh, racket or not, but uh, the reason why I went with the one I did is because it was just less expensive. They hit almost exactly the same so if I can get it for $20 cheaper I'm gonna do that another thing I forgot to mention is that uh, a lot of uh, racket clubs will also sell tennis rackets um, so indoor tennis facilities will sometimes have them uh, country clubs will also sometimes tell, sell tennis rackets um, and they'll for sure do stringing if they uh, do sell rackets um, so just a couple of places uh, to keep in mind if you're ever uh, looking to buy a tennis racket. All right, so after you've uh, got the uh, racket you're hoping to get with the strings that uh, kind of suit your play style the best, uh, the last things you need to worry about are your accessories for your racket. So that's things like your grip or your dampeners. Uh, so for me, I don't like a lot of vibration in my strings, so I actually play with three dampeners. Um, and uh, that really gives you uh, a lot more of a crisp feel, but a lot of people uh, don't play with any dampeners because they like to feel the strings vibrating and it kind of shows them that they really hit that sweet spot right in the center of the racket. Uh, for me personally, I don't like most standard grips that come with uh, rackets. Uh, so these are your, uh, they're just called uh, grips um, and they are a much thicker, uh, material and they paste directly onto um, the frame of the racket underneath this uh, with maybe a little bit of insulation. These are replaceable but a little bit difficult to pull off um, and after you pull that off you can put it uh, the grip you prefer. It's relatively simple uh, but it's pretty easy to make it look um, a little bit wonky once you fi uh, finish it. Uh, so I actually like to play with uh, over grips on and the kind of grips I usually like to use are uh, the Prince Tacky Pros. Um, they absorb quite a bit of moisture and uh, they kind of adhere to your skin a little bit um, so you get a nice uh, really solid grip on the racket. So if you found any of the information on the video helpful today uh, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and uh, subscribe uh, for more videos in the future. Um, 
and hopefully I'll see you guys out on the courts.